All right, everyone, today we're going to have a quick one, hopefully. Uh, this is an A1707 that came in with a complaint of no image. The customer said that it has no image on an external monitor, no image on the internal. They tried new screens, still no image. Now, it's really important for me to start this video with this. You will not get external image on a monitor if your internal display is plugged in unless you are signed in. So if you're doing this as a testing method, just plugging it into uh, USB-C to HDMI, you will not get image. You need to unplug the internal screen in order to get image. With that being said, I don't think this is an image issue. I think this is more of a backlight issue. So we're going to breeze through this really quickly. The very first thing I'm going to check on an A1707 or pretty much any new retina board that does not have backlight, I'm going to check for a short and backlight output. Um, in this case, uh, the board was already pulled out, um, so I did not have a chance to check when it was in the enclosure. But here's our backlight driver. Here's our backlight capacitors. I have my multimeter in um, ohms mode, and I'm going to check and that is 57 ohms to ground. This circuit handles around 48 to 55 volts, and if we have that low resistance to ground, we have a problem. This should be in the kilo ohms to mega ohms. So with that being said, I'm just going to do a quick inspection of these capacitors to see if I see any visual signs of anything wrong. Um, and the only thing that I see that's suspicious is that overspill of flux kind of in the center of those guys that is kind of suspicious but overall there's nothing really here that makes me think there's a problem so with that being said we have to inject some voltage and we have to thermal image this so I am going to pick a spot to inject some voltage I'm gonna set my uh, power supply we so we're not gonna just ram 55 volts into this that's how you cause a crater into the board we're gonna start pretty low um, just about one volt and then we'll go up from from there um, so we're just going to get a little uh, leaded solder in here just to make a good connection. Just like so. Little dab of flux. It, it's really nice when you could actually see the problem with the capacitor when you don't have to actually do this, but in this case we do. So there's that. Let's see if our thermal wants to work, which it does appear. No, it does not want to work. Okay, so we'll do it the old fashioned way. So power is going in. in three, two, one. And I'm pulling very low amperage, so I'm going to crank it up. There, we're pulling about 1.3 amps. So at this point, something should be getting pretty hot here. Get some Q-tip and acetone. So you can't really tell off any of these because it evaporates so quick. Let's flip it over. Over here. And my wire came off. That's a shame. Oh, well. We will do it over here as well. I could just actually touch it and see. It's really cool also sometimes when we have shorts like this, you can actually sh uh, see the, um, the a crack in the capacitor. I'm going to hold this. I'm going to say it's the one I suspected. That's, um, I'm going to put a little pool of acetone or alcohol, whatever you prefer. I'm just going to put a little bit like that, right? And I'm going to touch the All right, looks like we have one of these down here. It's hard to tell which one, honestly. This one. See the crack? You see the crack now. It's hard to see, but that is definitely a crack there. That is our bad capacitor. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I really wish my thermal camera worked on OBS, but it l just freezes. It used to work, but I don't know. The software is so lousy with it.
Fix that. I'm gonna grab one off of a donor. This capacitor can be found on many modern MacBook boards on the backlight circuit. Pretty much all the new. When I say new, I mean I, I'm talking like 2015 and newer. That I guess is new to me, but it's really not at this point. But it can be found on many boards. Say that. There's that. And do a little cleanup after um, this cools down a little bit. Just dry first. fine over here we had a little bit of ugliness yeah so see that capacitor when our, our wire broke off of it I don't trust that so we are gonna get rid of this one not gonna trust that on the board sorry My hand is in the way, sorry. No, it's not. And there is that. So this should be good to go. We're going to let it cool down. We're going to check for short after the board is cooled down. And then we're going to put it in the enclosure and see if we now get backlight and image. All right, our board is cooled down for a couple minutes. I'm going to check resistance now. And hopefully it will be back to normal and yeah we are 0 0.7 mega ohms so this should be good to go let's put this back in the enclosure and let's see what we get all right so we have our board set back in the enclosure i'm going to go ahead and plug in our USB-C charger and we have 20 volts 1.5 amps now these 1707s will always do a thing where they'll turn on turn off turn on turn off kind of like the old 820-3437 um but we're going to give it a second here, and I am willing to bet we will have nice backlight and image on this screen. There we go. That is the Apple logo. And waiting for it, waiting for it. Come on. Oh, there is a progress bar. It's just hard to see. See the little dot? Sometimes they do that when they're booting into recovery or resuming from sleep, something like that resuming from hibernate which is definitely a possibility so we're just going to give it a second i do have a cursor so that is good so we do have image we do a backlight it's just the os is being a little bit odd and there you go it did start up into recovery but this machine is fixed thank you for watching hope this video helps you in some way